Typeform offers several ways of organizing questions to make them a little easier to group together both for you as a creator and to make things easier for your respondents. The first of these is really just simple groupings, a way of putting together like questions. And we can do that by simply dragging in a question group. Now, this one behaves a little differently. It's going to bring up its dialogue to create a little bit of text, but then you'll be able to see what it's like afterwards. So let me drag this over here, and I drop it. And the first thing it does is it asks for a name at the top. This is like the question stem that the idea here is this is the text that unifies all the questions that are beneath it. Sometimes it's the beginning of a sentence, and then you put in other things. Sometimes it's a category name. I'm going to keep it simple. And we'll just ask people how much they like a whole bunch of different things. And you see that shows up over here in the main graphic and it shows sub questions that'll come up beneath it. Now I can put a description and image and stuff like that. Notice that by default, the button is not showing if I click on that the buttons the thing that says go to the next one. The idea is you don't want that because you want the focus on the sub questions. This is just a heading. And so I'm going to leave that off. You can require this entire group or you can require just the sub questions. That's a choice. But again, the idea is the fewer questions you require, the happier respondents generally are. So I'm going to leave it at that and just hit save. And then we'll ask them about different things they like. Now you see here, it's a little different in this organization. We now have a indented area. And this lets you know that those are going to be the sub questions. You can put all sorts of things in there. I'm going to do one example where they're all uniform, and then I'll do another example where they're different from each other. But let's start with this. Let's get a rating. And I'm just going to bring this over and drag it underneath my heading. And then I'll ask people how much they like stars. And there's my five stars. I realize this is a silly example, you would usually want something more meaningful than that. But I'll hit save. And now you see their stars right there. And I can bring in another rating question. And this time I'll ask them how much they like hearts. I'm going to put that at five also and I'll come down to hearts the next one. And then maybe I'll do one more because I can. And I'll bring that over. And I'll ask them how much they like skulls. Make that get that up to five. And then skulls is way down here at the bottom of this list. I think it's kind of funny that Typeform includes this as an option. We'll hit save. And now I have a single stem. This is my organizing group that says, How much do you like? And then I can have longer things, but I'm just giving one word stars, hearts, schools, and people respond to each of those separately. Now, these three obviously go together because they're just ways of completing the same sim, and they're all of the same question type. You can, however, have lots of different question types in your groups. So I'm going to bring in another group here. I'll drag it over. And you see, by the way, when I drag this over, all the other sub questions disappear. Now they show up again. But this time I'm going to put in some slightly different information. Imagine that we're selling a product that we need to ship people or we need billing information or something like that. We might have a question group that looks like this. I'll just say, in order to process your order, please enter your billing address. I'm not actually asking you guys for anything. This is just an example. Okay. I'm going to hit save here. And then let's begin with a few different kinds of information. Let's get a person's street address. So the number and the street name, we'll use short text for that. I'll drag that over here. And we'll put your street address. Great. That's easy. People will type in their information. It's open and they can do whatever they want there. I'll hit save. The next one I'm going to want is the city. And again, short text would be best for that one because people can put in an awful lot of different answers. And I'll just put city. And that's sufficient. 
Then I'm going to put in a different kind of question. I'm going to assume that we're dealing with people in the United States. That's where I am. And so I'm going to put a drop down for the 50 states in the United States. I'll begin by dragging over drop down again. That's when you have a multiple choice, but you have a lot of choices. I'll simply put here under the question state, excuse me, I'll spell it correctly state. And then I come down to the choices. Remember, when you do this, you need to have at least eight because the idea is if you have fewer than that, you should be using the regular multiple choice. Now, I have a list of states and I just copied it. And I'm going to paste it in right here. So there we go. By the way, they're in alphabetical order already. If they weren't, then I would select this thing alphabetical order. Now, I'm going to come down and hit save. Then I'm going to ask for one more thing. And that's their zip code. I could use short text, but this time I'm going to use number because they really should be typing in numbers. So I simply come over to number, drag that here. There we go. And then I'm going to put zip code. I'm going to put a tiny bit of descriptive text because you can have your standard five digit zip code or you can have the plus four that makes it nine digits. I'm just going to put five digits. And then I'm going to do one more thing as a very rough form of data validation. And that is what the range of possible values is. This is a way of just keeping too many digits from getting in there. I'm going to go it starts at zero and it goes up to one, two, three, four, five nines. And so that'll just check that it's a number that falls within that range. I'll hit save. And there's my form. Let's take a look at how this looks when you click on it. So I'll come up here to view my type form. All right, so when this opens, you see my logo and you see my descriptive text here, and I'm going to hit start. And then I type in my first name. Bart. Okay, and now this is a little different. Normally, you only see one question at a time, meaning only one is, you know, bolded. And this time, however, you have the stem, how much do you like, and you have the first sub question, and you see that it's A to A. How much do you like stars? I will say I like them a four. How much do you like hearts? And now, if you look up here, you see that the grouping question stays at the top. That's good because that provides our point of reference for what we're answering. For hearts, I'll say a five. Skulls, oh, they're scary, so I'll give them a three. And now that thing has disappeared at the top, and we go to the next question group. In order to process your order, please enter your billing address, street address. I'll give 3040 Overland Avenue. That's actually not where I live. City, Los Angeles. Then I come down to state. And by the way, remember with the drop downs, you can type in your answer, but you can also just click on the thing. Let's so California, let's say that's it. And then I'll give a five digit zip code 90064 that is in Los Angeles. And again, as I go through these, I have all these different kinds. And this group heading remains at the top to make it clear what I'm doing, I hit OK. And then I can hit submit and I'm done. And so that's a way of organizing the question. So the structure is a little easier for the respondents to follow. And especially when you're doing like multiple rating scales, it makes it much more concise. And that's one of the great ways of organizing to make your form both easier to work with and makes the results easier to deal with on your end.